Hi, this mini lecture is going to try to answer the question of what is design. Now this, this is something that is going to not have an answer. It's a question, what is design, of which if you ask 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different answers. So let's get that out of the way and try to discuss design very broadly at first. And the reason different people are going to give you different answers on design is that essentially what happens, particularly on large engineering projects, is different engineers and different people are engaged not in the complete design process, but in a small part of the design process. And as human beings, we tend to have the things we do at the front of our mind, and they influence our answers. And so none of the answers and none of the definitions of design are wrong. You really have to step back, though, and take a look at the complete design process to understand it holistically, even though you may not be doing that aspect of design at this particular time. And as I like to do with many things, I like to look to poetry to try to understand things. And this is the poem that's well known about the six blind men and the, el and the elephant. It was six men of Indostan, to learning much inclined, who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind, that each by observation might satisfy his mind. The first approached the elephant, and happening to fall, against his broad and sturdy side, at once began to bawl, God bless me, but the elephant is nothing but a wall. The second feeling of the tusk cried, Oh, what have we here? So round and smooth and sharp, to me tis mighty clear, this wonder of an elephant is very like a spear. The third approached the animal, and happening to take the squirming trunk within his hands, I see, quoth he, th this elephant is very like a snake. The fourth reached out his eager hand and felt about the knee. This wondrous beast is like is mighty plain, quoth he. Tis clear enough the elephant is very like a tree. The fifth, who chanced to touch the ear, that would be this guy here, said, Even the blindest man can tell what this resembles most. Deny the fact who can. This marvel of an elephant is very like a fan. The sixth no sooner had begun about the beast to grope than seizing on the swinging tail that fell within his scope. I see, quoth he, the elephant is very like a rope. And so these men of Indistan disputed loud and long, each in his own opinion exceeding stiff and strong, though each was partly in the right, and all were in the wrong. So, oft in theologic wars, the disputants, I ween, tread on in utter ignorance of what each other mean, and prayed about the elephant not one of them has seen. So this is kind of a silly poem. You've probably perhaps heard it in elementary school. But it really is true about design, is that design is to us what we do. And this is important because as you go through a design process, you'll be doing different tasks at different times. And here we're going to consider design somewhat holistically, back off and take what we call a 40,000 foot view, so we can try to understand all of design and not just one little piece of it that we may be familiar with. So thanks to the wonder of the Internet, I've gone out and gotten a few definitions um, from the web about what people say about design. The government of Massachusetts that has engineering classes required in their curriculum calls it an iterative decision-making process that produces plans by which resources are converted into products or systems that meet human needs and wants or solve problems. Um, Clive Dim, who we've basically met in an earlier lecture as one of the readings, says that engineering design is a systematic intelligent generation and evaluation of specifications for artifacts whose form and function achieve stated objectives and satisfy specified constraints. That's quite a mouthful, but you can go through and analyze it and get it that way. Um, ABET, which is the Accreditation Board for Engineering Architecture and Technology, who essentially all engineering programs need to be blessed by every six years in order to offer degrees that are worthwhile. Stage engineering design is the process of devising a system, component, or process to meet desired needs. It is a decision, it is a decision making process, often iterative, in which the basic science and mathematics and engineering sciences are applied to convert resources optimally to meet a stated objective. Among the fundamental elements of the design process are the establishment of objectives and criteria, synthesis, analysis, construction, testing, and evaluation. And we can parse this out, but what I want to do is highlight a couple of words. Design's a process. Design is decision making. It's iterative. It involves science and mathematics. It's applied to things. And it has some sense of there are better and worse ways to do it. In other words, design can be done optimally. 
Now, because this really is quite a mouthful, any of these definitions, and it's at least hard to me to keep um, six or seven words straight in my head at one time, and I think that's true of other people, what often happens is that we represent design graphically. So I've taken these six words from that I highlighted in the ABET definition, and let's look at some graphical representations of design that I also downloaded from the Internet. Um, something whose design has made it much easier to find information. This is a design problem from NASA for kindergarten through 12th grade educators that involves stating a problem, generating ideas, selecting a solution, and so on and so forth. You see that there's this iterative cycle, that things go round and round in a circle, which captures the iterative aspect of design. You see that there's decision making at several of these stages, and it is in fact a process. Another definition um, or visual representation is right here, where you start out research and identifying something. Um, you plan and scope a problem. You design, develop, test, and deploy iteratively. That's where the circle comes from. You review and analyze, and then maintain what you have at the end. One of the books that I teach design out of in many cases is Ford and Colston's Design for Electrical and Computer Engineers. Here we start off by identifying a problem, researching it, specifying requirements, generating concepts, designing solutions, and so on and so forth, where you get this large circle of steps that you can see if you go through it multiple times would be iterative. Um, we can also look at this in a completely different way and draw from a different textbook and you'll see if I simply go back and forth that the process and number of steps looks the same but the words in each of the steps change. And it's really unfortunate because diagrams like this I think confuse and misrepresent design more than they really help you understand what design is. People get the impression that design is simply a process you go through where you do this step, then this step, then this step in a very sequential and iterative order. But if you really look at this, you can see that these steps are in fact connected together. They're linked in very, very complicated ways. And people who research how design is done find that the more expert a designer is, the less they go through things in a sequential order. The more they sort of are able to jump from step to step. But you can't do that when you're learning design. That's the characteristic of an expert designer. So what I'd like to do in the next slide is to sort of break down design, to look at it on two different axes. One axis being these various steps that you take in doing design, and the other is ways you might have a level of understanding at each of these steps. So what does this look like? So if we break down design first on the levels of understanding, the first thing you need to be able to do is to understand what you're doing, to recall what you learn, explain what you're doing, and give examples to others. Beyond simply understanding things, you have to apply what you have. Use information to accomplish something concrete. Um, beyond that, you have to be able to analyze things, extract meaning from a collection of information. Because remember, problems aren't well defined in design in most cases. And you may have a lot of things you have to analyze to be able to make meaning out of things that are disconnected. And the highest level of thinking that you often do is what's called designing which is creating something new under these design constraints to achieve a near optimal outcome. So it's important that you understand what you do, you're able to use that information to accomplish something complete, you have the skill to analyze a wide range of information, select what's important to you, and then the designing really comes once you have those other skills in synthesizing this in a way that achieves something new. So what about the process of design itself? Well, I like to have a, a process with a fairly small number of steps. The first step is research and scoping the problem. What's the problem? What do I need to know to understand it? The second step is modeling things. We do that a lot in engineering. Um, OK, now that I have some ideas, how can I model this to see how they might behave? The third step is what I call decomposition, and this is a common technique in engineering where you break a complicated problem down into a series of sub-problems in order to say, okay, if I can't solve the big problem, maybe I can solve some of these sub-problems and then put it back together to solve the bigger problem once I understand the problem more, once I understand the pieces. Another step is implementing an actual solution where you go from the ideas, the models, the concepts to an actual physical or informational representation of what you're doing because there's a whole different set of skills involved here. 
and this is really where you start to build things but you notice this building of things comes four steps into the design process being able to measure what you've done and how well your solution works in relation to the problem as you understand it at the current point in time is also very important and of course you haven't ever done anything unless you can communicate what you've done so the final step of this problem or process is being able to communicate the results of your engineering work so others can understand it and who those others are is your audience and it may not be other engineers so you have to think very carefully about communicating and who you're talking to and if you combine all of this what I like to do is represent design not as a circle but as a spiral where you start off researching things once you've done researching you do a decomposition this allows you to model pieces implement solutions, measure how well they work, communicate to others how well those solutions worked. That's going to let you rescope the problem to say, okay, now I understand the problem better, I know the constraints better, I'm going to do some more research on my second iteration, do a decomposition, modeling, and so on and so forth. And this is almost an infinite spiral. And what happens as you approach a solution or as you finish the design process, you've moved into this kind of holistic space in the middle where all the color blend to white where you see the whole thing not as a series of steps but you can think about each of these in relationship to one another and this is really sort of the Zen point of designing you'll notice that I put this spiral on a couple of axes because different ways of thinking are involved I believe as you go through design the axis is a thinking versus doing axis and a lot of people who are novice designers want to jump right into doing because they would see design as doing but you'll notice the first stages of design researching and decomposition are more internal you're thinking about things rather than doing external things that other people can see the second axis is whether you're planning things thinking about the future or reflecting on things things that were done in the past and you can see that research for example is doing a lot of thinking about what others have done in the past and as we say standing on the shoulders of giants and building on other people's work as you start to decompose a problem you're thinking more about your solution moving into the future and of course as you move around this spiral measurement is actually taking action but you're measuring things you've done in the past and when you communicate you're doing a lot of reflecting on your past work so this is just another way to think about design not in terms of a cycle but in a spiral on different axes and if you read Larry Bucciarelli's book Designing Engineers you see that this is not done alone all of this is done with other people and requires the critical skill of negotiation all these steps aren't something you choose to do but are negotiated with everybody else in the design process the people you work for your customers the audience for your design and so negotiation is a critical skill that's layered throughout or sort of suffuses this entire process now I use the word process there very deliberately because design really is a process um, I like this quote from Thomas Edison that opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work obviously there's a lot of work to be able to cycle through this design spiral and do things over and over and over again rather than doing it once and saying you're done and the reason we do that is really design is the process from going from an idea to a final implementation but let's look closely now at this final implementation that I'm pointing all the arrows at when you start off a project that end point is blurry you don't really know what it is and the process of design and the reason it's important to think of design as a process is by going through that design process that end point look here gets clearer and clearer and so really it's important to think of design as a process now what's really critical in engineering design is to recognize that time is an aspect of this the longer it takes you to go through this process the more it's costing your company the more it's costing you the more it's costing your customers so this idea of the motion of time and things always moving in a circle is very important and that's why in engineering we've developed several techniques to make this process faster which really is the art of design one of these is being able to do the decomposition to basically do a block diagram or break our piece down into different our product or process or, or what we're building down into different pieces that can be worked on by different experts with different ex expertise 
Another thing we do a lot is that we use Gantt charts. These are ways that we can plan out a project, look at the time it should take, and reflect on whether we're actually meeting our schedule, whether we're doing this in the fastest time possible or whether we're getting behind. And since this in itself is a specialized expertise, what happens in many cases is many projects are going to have a project manager whose job it is to understand things holistically, to keep the process moving, and not to get too focused on one of the parts of the design, but to maintain the sort of holistic process all at once. Hopefully that gives you an overview of design. There are a lot more details, but this 40,000 foot view I think is very useful.